This video will describe the collection process of umbilical cord blood and tissue for stem cell banking. The umbilical cord blood and tissue are collected at the baby's birth, whether it be C-section or vaginal delivery. Patients who have opted to bank their baby stem cells will have a net cells collection kit with them and will bring it with them at the time of delivery. However, there may be some instances where they do not have their collection kits and you will be required to use one of the emergency kits stored either in the labour or maternity wards. The collection kit contains the following items. A sterile blood bag, a falcon tube containing saline, a silver foil bag with a gel pack inside, maternal blood tubes with a needle and barrel, gloves and an ampath form, client documentation. It is recommended that the maternal bloods are drawn once the expectant mom is admitted and before the baby is born, if there is an opportunity to do so. The Cord Blood Collection Protocol This procedure is done after the baby is safely delivered to minimize the disruption of the delivery process. The collection must never interfere in any way with the care given to the mother and the infant. It is of utmost importance that the procedure is done in a sterile manner. If the patient would like to do delayed cord clamping, it is recommended that it is not done for longer than 30 to 60 seconds, as this may greatly reduce the volume of cord blood collected. The step-by-step -step process of cord blood and tissue collection is as follows. 1. Open the blood bag onto a sterile tray just before the time of delivery. 2. Ensure all three blue clamps of the blood bag are closed. Three. Following the baby's birth, clamp and cut the umbilical cord. The blood must be collected prior to the delivery of the placenta. 4. Wipe the insertion site on the umbilical cord with a wet abdominal swab. 5. Remove the needle cap of the blood bag by pulling in a straight line. Stabilize the cord with the left hand and insert the needle towards the placenta into the umbilical vein. Six. Open the blue clamp on the main line and the clamp on the selected needles collection line. 7. The cord should be gently milked towards the collection bag to improve the speed and the volume of the collection process. 8. Once the flow has stopped or slowed down significantly, remove the needle from the cord and close the blue clamp on the collection line. 9. Secure the needle by sliding the red needle guard over it until it clicks into place. 10. If needed, you can repeat these steps with a second venipuncture high up on the umbilical cord to ensure a high volume of blood is collected. 100 to 150 milliliters of blood is required for a successful collection. Please note the calibrations on the collection bag. An insufficient amount could render the cord blood unit unusable for stem cell transplant. Larger collection volumes usually mean high volume of stem cells collected and a better chance of obtaining an optimal sample for transplants. Number 11. Once the collection is complete, release the contents of the rinsing pouch by snapping the cannula just above the join. 12. Roll the bag to add 8 ml of anticoagulant solution from the rinsing pouch to flush the collection lines. Please note that the use of anticoagulants is critical. Ensure all three blue clamps on the collection lines and the main red clamp leading into the collection bag are closed. 14. With all clamps closed, strip the tubing. 15. Tie two knots in the tubing above the main line clamp. Please note that tying this knot is essential. 16. Turn the bag over gently several times to mix the blood and anticoagulant. 17. Package the blood bag as per the packing instructions in the collection kit or watch the second in-service training video. The Cord Tissue Collection Protocol Number 1. Immediately following the cord blood collection, choose a section of the umbilical cord that is a. Undamaged or unpunctured by the cord blood collection needle b. Untangled 2. Using sterile scissors Cut a length of cord about 10 to 15 centimeters long. 3. Clean the cord with a sterile abdominal swab and sterile water. Squeeze as much blood out of the cord as possible. 4. The floor nurse will hold the open falcon tube for you. Please note that this tube is not sterile. 
5. Place the cut, clean piece of umbilical cord into the tube provided. Immerse the cord into the liquid, which is phosphate buffered saline, provided using sterile forceps. The floor nurse must close the lid tightly. Should the saline be spilt, sterile saline may be used to replace it. 6. It is advised that staff do not remove the surgical dish containing the placenta until they have checked that the core tissue has been collected.